Women on the Move Network. Welcome to the Women and the Move Network celebration of the 110th International Day of Women celebration. Women and the Move's network's mission and work towards gender equality is within the broader context of equity and inclusivity and is premised on the vision of promoting justice and peace in our local communities. Through our after-school programs for girls ages 9 through 17, and workshops for girls and women of all ages, we offer our participants with experiential learning, inspiration, tools and strategies for empowerment and confidence building so that they can be strong contributors to their families and their local communities. Women on the Move Network has made it a tradition to commemorate the International Day of Women by raising awareness, about significant accomplishments made in the arena of women's rights and by celebrating influential women and trailblazers whose wisdom, courage, and leadership contributed to eliminating inequities, discriminations, and violence against women and or by facilitating ways whereby women could gain full and equal participation in all spheres of influence and decision-making. Last year marked the 100-year anniversary of the year where women gained the right to vote. After having fought for a voice for several decades since the early promptings of this movement in 1848, our celebration last year was unfortunately canceled due to the pandemic. So this year, still following the state's health and social distancing mandates, we bring to you a virtual commemoration of International Day of Women and dedicate our celebration to honoring a few influential women, including our very own founder, whose visionary work towards gender equality has facilitated the movement towards justice in our local and national communities. We do hope that you find our presentations today informative and inspiring and that you find an interest in joining us and or any of our collaborators in this necessary and exciting movement and work towards equity and justice, which are the foundations towards building a peaceful society. Three virtues inspire and inform our mission in our organization. These virtues are to inspire, to educate, and to empower. I would like to read for you the mission statement of our organization, which those three virtues are the building blocks of our mission. Women on the Move Network is a nonprofit public benefit corporation whose mission is to promote the empowerment of girls and young women through a series of planned experiential education programs so that they may become strong and healthy contributors to our community. All of our programs are designed to help the participants gain the understanding, strategies and tools to make good decisions, choose healthy activities and relationships, explore new ideas, strengthen positive friendships, and develop leadership skills while having fun in a safe and welcoming environment. The flagship program that our institution uh, is uh, engaged in is Who is Your Hero? And Who is Your Hero program concentrates on educating, inspiring, and empowering young girls. Especially nowadays, this has been 
one of the most important activities that any community or any society can engage in. Especially nowadays, our girls are, uh, are more in the need of empowerment. We were inspired to name our program Hushed Wisdom after we heard the poem of one of our mentoring program participants, Mina. She wrote this poem when she was only 13. wisdom, which is silenced forever. Gone, the speed of light. Gone, before they were discovered. Hushed wisdom, that can never come back. They tell me their stories, but then it is gone, locked away in the past. How cruel is the world, or how kind? Were they behind bars in Auschwitz, or were they in fact Nazis? Hushed wisdom is like a thunderstorm, there and then not there. Were they forced to stay at home, too scared to go out? Did they have to learn in secret, thanks to the cruelty of the Taliban? Wisdom is still out there, so go and listen, before it too is hushed wisdom. If you look around in this society, whether that be in America or in other parts of the world, you see that women's voices are always silenced, um, whether that be systematically or violently. Um, so growing up as a 10 year old girl, this overwhelmed me. Um, and these women's stories all over the world inspired me to write my poem, Hushed Wisdom, which is about um, women being silenced all over the world. Women on the Move wishes to pay homage to our visionary founder, Dr. Wilma Ellis. We have arranged for a little surprise as part of this tribute by inviting someone very special to offer his insight into the life, work, mission, and convictions of this legendary woman who has broken the silence in many occasions by her unfailing wisdom. Wilma has always been committed to the service of humanity, always. Since, uh, since my childhood, I always remember her being actively involved in service to the community on any level she had access to. And so it, it was not surprising that in her later years, actually in retirement, she looked around for other opportunities to be of service to the community. And so she found Women on the Move, and, uh, and it became a 20-year labor of love and service to the upliftment of girls and women. We're all so grateful for the work that Women on the Move has done because it inspires young girls to believe in themselves, to understand what their capacity can be, 
and the kind of effect they can have on the transformation of the lives of all of the people that they come in contact with, the families that they form, the families that they're a part of, the friends that they have, and the communities in which they reside. That foundation of confidence and belief that I can have a positive effect on all of the people I contact is fundamental to a happy and fulfilled life. Once upon a time, the three of us sat at this table mm -hmm. and we were having tea or something, I don't know what. And Wilma was telling us that she had been to Ireland. I went to Irish Baha'i Summer School. They wanted me to participate. They said, uh, would you please take the afternoon with all the girls? young girls, teenage girls. Mm -hmm. And I said, fine, I'll, I'll do that. All I said was, I introduced things, subjects. How is your school life going? And they really talked about their lives. I kept getting one theme that bothered me. And that was, I'm not really happy. And that got my attention, of course. Remember when you were telling us about the, the conference, the women's conference, you've been to Ireland, how excited you were and how well done it was and how Im important it was for women to be involved yes. in every strata of society. Yes. We are all terribly grateful for the efforts that are being made to tell the story of women on the move. I mean, this is a wonderful organization, and I particularly liked the opening scene where Barbara, uh, Barbara Marino, Diane Gunther, and Wilma Ellis Kazimzadeh are sitting around Wilma's kitchen table and remembering the day that they uh, began to dream dreams of creating women on the move. And Barbara says, once upon a time, and, and uh, then Diane tells the story of Wilma having gone to Ireland and, and uh, being asked to uh, teach a course at a Baha'i school with young girls. And somehow all of that got blended into their aspiration to help young girls rise up, help them feel a sense of confidence, a sense of purpose in the world, a sense of their capacity to really change how things are for them, for their families, for their friends, for their relatives. And the, what I really liked about it was that it teaches the rest of us that ordinary people can arise to do extraordinary things. And that when we do it and we meet all the challenges and the struggles and the setbacks and reverses, and we turn them around through the persistence of our love and our service, that wonderful benefits accrue to the people we serve and to us as well. So thank you very much for this initiative and uh, nothing but love and gratitude in our hearts for my mother Wilma, uh, for my friend Barbara and for my friend Diane and for all of the others uh, who have founded and lifted up Women on the Move so that it can in turn lift up the lives of so many girls and women. Our next honoree for the Women on the Move Network celebration this year is Dr. Devorah Lieberman, the University of Laverne's 18th and first female president. Dr. Lieberman has received national recognition for her commitment to equity, diversity, and inclusion, and for incorporating values such as spirituality and service to community as the bedrock of learning and the college experience at the University of Laverne. We honor President Lieberman for her unwavering commitment to gender equality and girl empowerment. Good afternoon all of you wonderful attendants to the Women on the Move conference. I'm delighted to welcome you to the conference. 
uh, along with the other panelists. I'm Deborah Lieberman, the president of the University of Laverne. The primary reason that I am so excited to be with you is because the University of Laverne and Women on the Move have a beautiful, expansive relationship. Both of our organizations serve our communities and they serve the women in our communities in ways that make all of us better. How does the University of Laverne do that? Well, community university partnerships are right at our core. Inclusion is one of our primary values so that everyone says, this is exactly where I belong and I can be my authentic self. We built a magnificent building that truly represents and reifies our values and the same values as the women on the move that is focused on spirituality, cultural understanding and community engagement. When we all come together, we cross lines of difference, we learn from one another, we make each other better and we serve our communities. We know that our communities will benefit. Every student who graduates from the University of Laverne is committed to their communities, through their professional lives, and through their personal lives. So women, women on the move, you are doing fantastic work. And we at the University of Laverne were honored to call you our partners and to partner with you. Have a great conference. like to thank Ms. Diaz for mentoring for mentoring us and last year we went to a conference in a girl talk and it was fun because we got to um, like learn about how to be confident and we learned about friendship <laughs> and um, and how to be careful on the social media and homework tips and health tips. Hi, my name is Sarah Fieta and I am one of the girls that joined the Girl Talk program. And something that they taught us at the Girl Talk program was um, how to be organized and how to be career ready. search for trailblazers who pushed the boundaries of old laws and introduced legislation which allowed many women to break their silence and raise their hushed voices, we chose two powerful, first ever, and most accomplished politicians, California State Senator Connie Leva and California Assembly Majority Leader Eloise Gomez Reyes, both of whom our organization has had the pleasure an honor of knowing closely. Senator Leva is one of Sacramento's leading voices on women's issues. She found that women's rights were always under attack and wanted to be an advocate for women. Senator Leva represents the 20th District in California State Senate, serves as the chair of the bipartisan and bicameral California Legislative Women's Caucus, and commissioner on the Commission on the Status of Women and Girls. She is committed to improving the lives of women and girls. In her role as a legislator, Senator Leva has authored important bills that were signed into law, such as eliminating statute of limitation on rape and a ban on non-disclosure agreements in civil cases of assault, sexual harassment, sex discrimination, and has worked to improve the status of women and protection of the victims of domestic violence. Hello, I'm State Senator Connie Leva, and I would like to thank Hushed Wisdom for recognizing me today. I feel very honored to do this job. I've been a state senator for six years, and to be able to speak for those who are voiceless, to give the voiceless a voice. What an honor for me and what a privilege for me. In the six years that I've been in the Senate, the governor has signed 40 of my bills into law. So many of them are helping women eliminating the statute of limitations on rape, making sure that rape kits are promptly tested. This year we're introducing another bill to make sure that survivors can track those bills and see where they are in the process. 
criminalizing sextortion, protecting those who have been human trafficked, banning secret settlements, and overtime for domestic workers. Those are a few of the bills that we have been able to work on to try and make things better for women in our society. We know that we still face barriers that men don't face, and it's really truly my pleasure to get to work on those issues every day. Thank you for what you do, and thank you for res recognizing the work that we get to do on Team Leva. Thank you. California Assembly Majority Leader Luis Gomez Reyes, first Latina ever to hold this position in December of 2020, also serves as the chair of the Assembly Human Services Committee and serves on many other committees. She is a fierce advocate for women and girls. Since her coming to the office in 2016, Majority Leader Reyes has authored legislation to advance equal pay and to empower women to seek justice for employment discrimination claims. Majority Leader Reyes is committed to fighting for working mothers and women of color, sexual harassment prevention, equity and inclusion. It is our pride and honor to showcase the advocacy work and leadership of this outstanding legislator. Thank you so much, Sohela, and hello to all the strong women in attendance. I would like to take the time to personally thank the outstanding women we have in our community. I am honored to be recognized alongside such incredible women who continue to lead, inspire, and champion women's rights. Day after day, you endure societal and cultural pressures, issues with racism and sexism, and unrealistic expectations. Thank you for waking up every day and making the choice to love and inspire. It is thanks to our mothers, our sisters, wives, sisters-in-law, grandmothers, aunts, and so many other women that we have the strength to continue moving forward on even the hardest days. I would also like to thank the Women on the Move Network for this and for your leadership, your commitment to diversity, and efforts to empower young women and girls. At this time, I would also like to specifically thank my mother and my sisters for what they did to inspire me to pursue a career in law, run for office, and seek leadership positions. It is thanks to their efforts and your presence that I was able to be the first Latina in the Inland Empire to have her own law firm, and then to successfully run for the California Assembly, and now to be the first Latina majority leader of the California State Assembly. We've worked on many bills, like the firefighter program for the previously incarcerated, a bill to extend worker protections against COVID, a bill to provide child care benefits and EITC benefits for our I-10 filers, our immigrants. We've also done lots of work with service to our seniors in the district. We've accomplished a lot, but we've done it together. Thank you for trusting me to lead the 47th Assembly District. I am honored and grateful for this recognition. Thank you and happy Women's Empowerment Month. Women on the Move's next honoree is another trailblazer, the founder of Tahira Justice Center, Mrs. Laili Miller Murrow, who was instrumental in changing an immigration law which helped women and girls who escaped human rights abuses such as female genital mutilation, gender-based violence, human trafficking, torture, and rape. Mrs. Miro's nonprofit Tahari Justice Center has a holistic approach to providing legal, social, and other services, training, and education to the victims. The center is named after the influential female poet and theologian Tahare, who campaigned for women's rights and started the emancipation of women in the Middle East in the mid-19th century. Tahereh's brave act of attending an all-male conference and removing her veil in their midst was a radical act of rebellion against all cultural, social, and religious norms and standards of the past. And paralleled in significance, the feminist movement starting here at the same time in the West. Nigeria, you 
when you're a man, you're supposed to subdue the woman. You subdue her so she doesn't raise her hand or do anything. My husband's family thought it's uh, very shameless if uh, uh, I got divorced because uh, I, I was like their property. If I go back to Pakistan, then uh, my in-laws are uh, still waiting for me. They will kill me. They want to get my kids. I had a cousin. She was 15 years old. My uncle wants her to get married to a 70 years old man. She said, no, I'm not going to do that. She just told somebody I'm going to run out and go away. Uh, I'm not sure who killed her, but they said my uncle killed her. One of my pastors, she was so concerned that my husband was going to kill me. I had to relocate from Lagos to another state just to hide myself. Because I remember one day he said, I will kill you and I will face the consequences. And of course, if he does that, nobody will do anything to him in Nigeria. And I remember what the police officer told me. He just said, woman, go and, go and respect your husband. I felt so helpless and as if my life you know, had come to an end. I know that some people that are experiencing what I've experienced, I want them to know that there is a way out. The Tahare Justice Center's mission is to provide justice and bring dignity to the lives of courageous women and girls who are demanding freedom from violence. And for many of these women, they're asked now by a system to prove things that they've tried so long to hide. And if there's an obstacle in our client's path to protection, it's my job to figure out a way to remove it to reach out to the public, to policymakers, to create broad-based national coalitions, to do whatever it takes to ensure that the change that's needed happens. We're able to take on a lot of cases that many other organizations, including immigration attorneys and nonprofit organizations, would not. And so we're really able to fill a void. We provide holistic service to our clients so that they can find social services, medical services, psychological support, and housing so they can rebuild their lives and live a life with dignity. They help me about food, finding somewhere to live, clothes, everything. I feel good. I work for U.S. military to train them for Afghanistan and Iraq. I love helping people. Because somebody helped me, I think, in my life, and I want to do that to others. That's me. That's my decision. We need many different kinds of resources. We need the generosity of volunteers, but most importantly, we need money so that we can do the work that's required to save their lives. That is saved me and saved three girls. So see it that way that you're, you're touching a life. And what is life on this earth if you don't touch somebody else? Tahere was an amazing figure in human history. She lived in the mid-1800s and was known for her heroism, her courage, her intelligence, her beauty, her wisdom. She was most famous for one particular act of defiance where she publicly removed her veil before an assemblage of men. And the act was so shocking at the time that a man who was in the audience stood up and he slit his own throat at the sight of her because it was considered so dishonorable just to look at her face. She was eventually executed for her beliefs and activities. And her last recorded words at her execution at the age of 32 were, you can kill me as soon as you like, but you will never stop the emancipation of women. Tahere was, in addition to being an incredible feminist historic figure, was also one of the first believers in the Baha'i faith. And in the Baha'i faith plays an important role in exemplifying um, what women can be and the importance of achieving equality of women and men in the world in order for humanity to progress. So to honor her legacy and her really important ro role, both in the world as well as in the Baha'i faith, the Tahare Justice Center is named after her. It 
is with great honor that Women on the Move Network recognizes Ms. Dolores Huerta, the first Latina inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame in 1993. One of our educators and mentoring program coordinators, Mrs. Veronica Diaz Sacido, will present Ms. Dolores Huerta and her foundation's work, as well as her loving endorsement and support for the Women on the Move Network. We are honored here today to present to you a few words of encouragement from an American labor leader, civil rights and women rights activist who together with Cesar Chavez co-founded the United Farm Workers Union, recipient of the Presidential Medal of Freedom and originator of the phrase, Si Se Puede. She was the honorary co-chair of the Women's March in Washington in January, 2017. She broke the silence of women of all color and brought them to the front of the feminist movement so that it was no longer just a movement for white women. It is my honor to introduce to you Dolores Huerta. Nuevamente, quisiera presentarles a nuestra distinguida líder, activista, cofundadora con César Chávez, donde fundaron el Sindicato de los Trabajadores Agrícolas, UFW. Fue cofundadora también de la Marcha de Mujeres en 2017. Aparte de todos sus logros como activista, ella fue la autora del dicho Si sí se puede y recipiente de la Medalla del Presidencial de la Libertad. Rompió el silencio de las mujeres de color. Trajo el movimiento feminista para todas las mujeres. Es un honor presentarles a ustedes la gran señora destingada Dolores Huerta. Hello, my name is Dolores Huerta and I'm the president of the Dolores Huerta Foundation for Grassroots Community Organizing. In my organization, we organize families in their communities to be able to take on and solve the problems that they have, whether it be about infrastructure, it was about education, about racial discrimination, and all of the things that so many families, the challenges that they are confronted with. And I am so honored to be with all of you to celebrate International Women's Day. Yes, a day that we can really celebrate and to be here with this wonderful organization uh, that makes it very, very special uh, for all for me to be here with all of you. And I know that Women on the Move is a volunteer organization. And uh, yes, we need so many people to help. So, you know, as we're out there and we're talking to other people, let's make sure that we get more helpers, more volunteers, and for more mentors uh, for Women on the Move uh, organization. This is a, a really, really great organization. And yes, all of those young women out there, all of those girls out there, yes, we need you. You know, Coretta Scott King said, we will never have peace in the world until women take power. And who are those women that we're talking about? They are you. They are you. And so I want you always to remember that you are strong and that you have a voice and don't let anybody get in your way. Don't let anybody dominate you because all of you I know are going to really be giving your lives for social justice and so that women can have a voice in this world. Uh, you know, there are, we are getting better at getting women elected to Congress. We're not yet at 50-50 because women, you know, we are, uh, the the largest uh, population we are actually in this world we're more than men but we don't have that representation so I just want to say to all of you uh, you can run for your class president or, or some uh, kind of a club or office at your school so we can learn uh, those skills about how that we can uh, gain power and the one thing that we do have to remember is the power is in your person never forget that Power is in your person, and this is all of the power that you need. But you definitely always have to reach out uh, to get other people involved because even though we have our personal power, we really can't do everything by ourselves. We've got to reach out to others and learn how to work together. Just exactly like women on the move, this is the way that they are able to accomplish so much for all of the girls. And you know, because they network, 
They work with like-minded organizations. And this is a way that we build the women power that we need uh, because we have so much work to do in the future to make the world a better place, a safer place for all of our women. And we're gonna be working on really big major issues like the Equal Rights Amendment for Women. Yes, we all work on that. Who knows, we might be able to get it passed this year in the Congress. So keep on working with women on the move. As I said before, let's get more helpers, get more mentors. I had mentors also. The gentleman that taught me how to organize was a great man named Fred Ross Sr. And then of course, Cesar Chavez, who I worked with to organize farm workers. And the one thing that I learned about organizing is the most effective way is just by talking, talking to other people, talking in small groups to families. And this is the way that we organize and this is the way that we build power. And the, power, the kind of power that we need to build is women's power and girl power. So I wanna congratulate all of you. I know we're gonna have a really, really great year working with women on the move. Yes, we can. Si se puede. Women on the Move Network is also excited to honor one of its celebrity collaborators, a singer, a songwriter, a recording artist, and a producer, Ava Bowers. Her bio says that Ava cannot easily be described or labeled, and we agree. She is a multidimensional artist which fuses the rich melodies of traditional Eastern music with Western chord structures in an eclectic mix of sounds and styles. What Ava is often so humbly silent about is her loud and clear activism against abuses of human rights and portrayal of the religious persecution through her music. She has supported the women's rights movement and has spoken against human rights violations with her artistic expressions and has indulged Women on the Move Network with her generosity and generously sharing her music and support. Ava has shared with us a song called Raha, the Free, which is about the persecution of truth and the plight of the Baha'i community in Iran. The song was written by a female prisoner whose only crime and punishment of 10 years of incarceration was her religious conviction and belief about unity of God, unity of religion, and unity of humankind. The song is presented to you in the original Farsi lyrics with a brief English translation for capturing the essence of the story. Your crown has already been bought and paid for. All you have to do is put it on your head. First, I would like to thank all the members of the board of directors. Through their tireless work, they have created a space for young ladies and women to recognize their potential and achieve their dreams. I am very happy and honored to be part of this movement. Today, I would like to share with you one of my songs called Raha. The lyrics to this song were realized by a poem written by Mrs. Mahfaz Sabit while she was in prison in Iran because of her beliefs in the Baha'i faith. I am in awe of her strength and peaceful resilience. They try to hush her voice and imprison her, but she never budged or gave up her beliefs. She felt truly free and through her art, she expressed that freedom. As someone who also has lived a life that was subject to religious persecution in Iran, and after moving to the United States, unfortunately experiencing some backlash because I was a minority and an immigrant, I learned that that peaceful resilience was my savior. And as someone who's in the performing arts, I say on this stage called life, find your light and shine. Here's Rahul. 
نبه باوری در که به چشم دیده باشد نه اگر کلام و حرفی زلبش شنیده باشد نه در این زمان رحمی و به عشق جمله وهمی چه خوشندمی که عهدی به وفا رسیده باشه نه کسی همیشه باید که در این سراب مانم نه کریسمان عمری به عبد کشیده باشم چه خوشا سار زندان به دمی راهیده باشه کس چنین برای که فدا شود به آنی مگر از اصل Another honoree of Women on the Move Network is Ms. Barbara Talley, whose motivational work, poetry, speeches, and conferences in the area of social action 
are sure to capture your heart and soul. We let you be the judge. Be silent, Black woman. So your children die more often than mine. Don't speak of the inequities. We've forgotten. How dare you remind? Be silent, Black woman. This is not the time or place for tears. Be silent, Black woman. Anyway, nobody wants to hear. Be silent, Black woman. Be silent about the drugs. Be silent about the violence. Be silent about the racism. Be silent, Black woman. Be silent. Be silent, Black woman, or we won't continue to let you near. We know about your children's plight. We just don't want to hear. Be silent, Black woman. Isn't our kind rhetoric any longer enough for you? The problem's bigger than all of us. There's nothing we can do. Be silent, Black woman. You know that's how we like you the best. Be silent, Black woman, or we'll treat you like all the rest. Cry in your old tears, cry in your bed. Be silent, Black woman. You heard what I said. Be silent, Black woman. I said, we've heard enough from you. Be silent, Black woman. There's nothing we can do. Be silent, Black woman. Be silent, Black woman. Be silent, Black woman. The theme for International Women's Day is choose to challenge. To challenge means to contest, to question, to stand up, to stand up. So what will you commit to challenge? Because right now, many are challenging our basic right to vote, which women didn't even get until 1920. And it would take until 1965, the Voting Rights Act to protect black men and women and allow them to even exercise that vote. Thus far this year, 33 states have introduced, pre-filed, or carried over 165 bills to restrict voting access. Our votes determine our rights, our health, and even our opportunities for wealth. And all rights are not equal for women. There's always been a separate reality for black women and white women when compared to men. On average, it will take till March 24th, 2021 for women to gain the same amount of money, to earn the same amount of money that men earned at the end of the previous year because we only make 82 cents on the dollar. But let's dig a little deeper because 82 cents might not sound so bad. Black women will have to wait until August 23rd, because they only make 63 cents on the dollar. Native American women will have to work until September 8th, 2021 to make the same as a white man did last year because they only make 60 cents on the dollar. Latino women earning only 55 cents on the dollar will have to work until October 21st, 2021. Black women only hold a fraction of the elected offices they should in light of their numbers. And it will take 228 years for black people to catch up with the same wealth as whites have today. And almost half of all black women have either no accumulated wealth or are in debt. But this can't be all. She stands tall. Some are mesmerized and others enthralled. At the injustices she's endured, one could only be appalled. But she has chosen and she hears a greater call. For us, she says, this cannot be all. She stands strong, oh, so strong, sometimes alone for way too long, waiting for her sisters to come along and use their power collectively to wage a spiritual fight, to help her men, her babies, her sons and daughters distinguish between wrong and right. Standing alone, she hears a spiritual call. The future looks bleak, but she knows this cannot be all. She knows for her own this cannot be all. For her sons she mourns their worsening plight. 
Through her tears, she worries that they'll be sent to war to fight or worse, be shot in the back by police coming home at night. She avows to not give up for she knows it's not fair nor morally right. And although beaten down, she continues to arise with a new, a renewed force and might. She sees a better tomorrow and her path to it. She relies on God to light because she hears a spiritual call. Oh no, she says, this cannot be all. Oh no, 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 she says, this cannot be all. This cannot be all. My sisters, we all must stand up and choose to challenge the injustices together. Women on the Move Network's next honoree is Nanaba Fogeth Bowman, the program coordinator at the Native American Baha'i Institute. She will share with us the untold stories of her ancestors and the centuries-old wisdom that was hushed until now. Happy International Women's Day. International Women's Day is powered by, by universal participation in collective efforts at all levels. Yat e she nana bafogeth deshajene. Toy he glini nishle. Tachini e bashishchin. Bit anni deshache. Bilagana e deshanele. I'm talking to you all from the southern part of the Navajo Nation in the community called Hauk. I just introduced myself in my language. Traditionally and historically, Navajos called ourselves the people, Diné. Sacred stories have been passed down from generation to generation to tell of earthly and cosmological origins and relationships between the human consciousness, the heart, our being, and our place and existence in the universe. Through our traditional cultural stories, we tell of four worlds that have led the people into emergence to present day, to this new day. I'm coming to you as an indigenous woman belonging to a matrilineal community and society. The Diné people have its origins in its creation story founded in a prophet woman called Changing Woman, Asana Glehe. She is the one who birthed the clans, the ancestors of the Navajo people, and gave the young ladies their ceremonial coming of age ceremony called Kinalda. I'd like to share with you some hushed wisdom amongst indigenous Navajo women as it relates to changing women. As Diné people, we tell our stories in the home. This is a traditional dwelling, a home called Ho'oran. This is molded and constructed after our understanding of the cosmos and our place in the universe. We respect Mother Earth, the stars, the night sky, the heavens, the sun, and the moon. And it is Asana Glehe, changing woman, who had the first menstrual cycle and the coming of age. She gave this ceremony and special songs to the community and especially in the care of the women to pass down to their children. It is the sacred menstrual cycle that my grandmother taught us to call the moon, the moon cycle. It is a bounty and privilege to be considered an ancestor of Asana Glehe. And Navajo women consider this ever-changing cycle every 28 to 30 days, which follows the lunar cycle, the moon. Therefore, we call it our moon, our menstrual cycle. It is a bounty and privilege to say to you and empowering all women in all spheres of endeavor to take our rightful place in the collective and unfolding development of our communities, families, livelihood, and in all dimensions of our lives. The hushed wisdom of the Diné people, particularly passed down through Asan Nagle, a changing woman, is the moon cycle in which the female characteristics change and grow with the circumstances and exigencies in the environment which she finds herself. I have the song for you, and I hope that this song brings you joy throughout the year, 
and particularly finds a place in your heart to know that we are changing every month and we are shedding what is old and what is toxic and what is maybe not good for us and we're inviting rejuvenation with the moon cycle. This is a Navajo song that the people sang upon our release from our incarceration at Fort Sumner after the signing of the Treaty of 1868. Thank you to all my relations. Women on the Move is proud to honor one of its celebrity spokesperson and collaborators, Ms. Megan Tandy, a movie star, a TV celebrity, and an entrepreneur. Megan will share with you her story and the learning experiences at mentoring programs of the Women on the Move Network called Who's Your Hero? and the conferences that she has partnered with us, The Girl Talk. Hi, my name is Megan Tandy. I am an actress on the CW show Batwoman, as well as CEO of the Megan Tandy Foundation, which also represents Girl Talk and the Empire Girls. But before I hopped on to Batwoman a few years ago, I used to be Miss California USA. And I had the wonderful, wonderful, distinct privilege of being able to spend my community hours with the Women on the Move Network via Who's Your Hero. And this was just such a wonderful experience for me because I love mentorship. I love giving back in this way. I love speaking to um, to, to, to women and to youth, you know, particularly, and to be able to go and, and, and have this experience that the Women on the Move Network had created with Who's Your Hero, it honestly ended up just inspiring me. It ended up uplifting me. And, and I remember being there and speaking to the girls and them being so excited about my crown and, and the fact that I was there, it, um, it made me want to go a little further in, in making it something that teenagers could be a part of. And I remember a few years after that, I had asked Diane and Barbara, Sohela and Wilma, I said, hey, I've got an idea. What if we do girl talk and have a, a one once a year convention for girls ages 12 to 19 where they can just come and feel empowered and be excited and, and it'll still be informative. It'll still be educational, but it will be fun and it'll be exciting and a place where they can just let loose and just be themselves. And the Women on the Move Network, they were right there on it. They were so excited about it, very enthusiastic about it. And we got it up and going and we had our very, very first convention and everybody was just so excited. It was so much fun. And and um, and honestly, after every Girl Talk convention, I'm always literally in tears because it's just you know, what we get to do to be able to give back in this way and to girls and to make it something free. Thanks to the Women on the Move Network, the event has always been free. The girls don't have to pay. They can just come and have access to these wonderful experiences and opportunities and have a chance to learn and to, you know, have new friends at no cost. 
the cost is really just their time on a Saturday in the summer, <laughs> which is a big deal for a teenager. <laughs> but it was always just such a wonderful treasure to be able to have um, in the summertime. And from that, I wanted to you know, go a little bit further because the girls were wanting to keep it going. And so I created the Empire Girls, which was uh, we would still have our workshops, but it would happen every couple of months where we would get together, um, very similar to kind of how they have Who's Your Hero, and now it's more online based with things that are taking place, but the truth is a lot of this would not have been able to really get that kickstart had it not been for the Women on the Move Network. You know, when I think of Sohela and Diane and Wilma, Barbara, you know, I get so emotional because these women just represent so, so many of the things that I also stand for. And the, the very center of it is oneness. You know, we do not want separatism. We do not want there to be all this individual stuff. We want us to all come together as one. And I think that's why this was just such a wonderful match for me, because it was something that I also represent in my own life. And so, you know, I would not have been able to get all these things, you know, my these ideas of how we can further mentorship, you know, had it not been for the support of the Women on the Move Network. And I will always be forever grateful and thankful for that. So just thank you so much for your love and for your support of me over these, actually it's been about eight, 10 years now. Um, and I'm so thankful that we're continuing to go and we're continuing to grow, but it's all thanks to Women on the Move Network. So thank you so much. I miss you guys. I love you. And I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day. Mwah. In 2021, over 100 years after the first inaugural event in Seneca Falls in New York in March of 1911, marking the first International Day of Women, we have no doubt gained much progress in deconstructing sexism and cultivating awareness. Yet the work has just begun and much remains to be done to uproot the societal ills that were mainly premised on malicious, malignant, and divisive concepts of dominance by force, aggression, and promoting otherness. Women on the Move Network aims at shifting the balance by raising awareness, redefining roles, responsibilities, and relationships, and also by showcasing the physical and the spiritual qualities and attributes of women, their mental vigilance, intuition, love, service, and all wisdom which hath been hushed for centuries and had kept half of the world's population from full and equal participation in social, civil, legal, and religious arenas of life and spheres of influence. We challenge every one of you to become an active player in this movement and help lift our humanity to its destined heights of excellence and advancement. We congratulate our honorees, appreciate our supporters and collaborators, and thank all of you for sharing your time and positive energy with us today. Be well and stay safe.